is just the beginner's guide or introduction to LinkedIn ads, uh, which I am very passionate about. And it is a really good platform that I think any B2B business should be using. So this is just going to walk you through the absolute basics. So first, really basic on your LinkedIn profile, this is where you go into it because it's not like Facebook ads manager where it's a separate entity. I mean, it kind of is, but you access it through your um, individual account. So when you go to your individual account and you click advertise, you'll have listed all the accounts that you have access to. Um, and I will show you around quickly. And I have videos either now or coming out that will go over each of these details. So I'm just gonna gloss over them and give you kind of like the first tour through the building, like on your first day of work. So this is the campaign manager um, dashboard. You have basic reporting over here. You have different, um, you can make these columns do whatever you want. Like there's some that are focused on performance, delivery, engagement, video, message send. Um, I have my own custom little dashboard so I can see the metrics that I think are important. Um, there are different charts where you can see breakouts here and export the data. The main thing is, so this is the campaign groups, which is the large groupings. Um, I typically have cold ads in a group. I have retargeting ads in a group. And, um, and then within those campaign groups, then you would have individual campaigns, um, which run separate from each other so that you can target different people, load different creative assets, use different styles of ads and control budget. Um, and that way you can turn these on and off. Uh, there's ways to schedule them. Uh, and then inside the campaigns are actual individual ads. So you have campaign groups, you have campaigns, and then in the campaigns you have ads with the individual creatives. And the anatomy of a LinkedIn ad is the basics that you have. Intro text, destination URL, where you want to send them, your headline, which is this part down here, and then usually you have the call to action, which this one would be a form um, that they hit submit so that they get signed up to our newsletter. Next, I'm going to show you uh, the basics of where you can create your audiences. So audiences is where you can create all your custom audiences that can then be used for retargeting. So 30 day website visitors, 90 day website visitors, uh, conversions, um, certain key page visitors, company page visitors, 50% uh, or 75% more video views of something. So all those exist here. You create them. Uh, they make it really easy for you to do. Uh, and then you can also add block lists and uh, you can add those to your exclusions. This uh, conversion tracking is where you set up kind of your goals. We have booked calls, confirmed purchase, and we have different levels of purchases that we track. Most people just track form fills on their website. And then if they're really good, booked calls. And then this is where you get your insights tag, which is the little code or pixel that you'd put on your website so that LinkedIn can track your website traffic, and which is needed to create those uh, retargeting groups. Other than that, your lead gen forms live here. Um, history, landing pages, uh, that's kind of the basics. And the, the idea or the main... Um, the main thing I would say when kind of approaching LinkedIn is that the cold, the cold ads tend to be a higher cost per click than your typical Facebook ads. And they get a lot of flack for that. But I would say that the, the amazing saving grace of LinkedIn ads and why it's such a powerful tool is that, let me see if I can show you is that um, when you do the retargeting, it's not just um, retargeting website visitors. Like when you do Facebook retargeting, you can do like, I guess, highly engaged, like people who spent more time on your page. Um, but LinkedIn, oops, LinkedIn actually allows you to filter um, retargeting by demographic. So I'm clicking on all the wrong stuff. So I can say website visitors. So down here I have it 90 day website visitors, 90 day company visitors and 90 day um, people who clicked into one of my cold ads. So I have all of these, um, which this is actually really cool because this gets around the privacy and the cookie data. LinkedIn knows exactly which people 
clicked on your ad and you can retarget them without having to rely on website cookie. But in addition to saying 90 day website visitors, um, you can set criteria on top of that saying, but they do have to be from these locations with these job functions or these specific job titles, this seniority level or higher, and don't reserve it to anyone in my company, my competitor's company, um, anyone who you don't want to see the ads. So that part is actually really cool because so much of the time I see people afraid to do like LinkedIn retargeting because they think their website traffic is like over diluted. Um, you know, they have a lot of SEO and people going to see the blog and they don't want to retarget everyone. It wastes a lot of money. Um, but you can specifically target just your ideal client persona who's visited your website. So that extra filter and power uh, is really cool. And I guess I could have stayed right there and showed you that the other um, reason that everyone really loves LinkedIn is for its targeting. So on Facebook, um, I would say for B2B, I mean, Facebook is amazing for its algorithm for B2C, but for businesses saying they like Gary V or they follow Gary V, they like these three pages and they're in this geography, that's, and then just giving it a 5 million person group to kind of sift through and let it do its thing and eventually find it. Like that's really tough for B2B. Um, so unless you own the data up front and upload a list to Facebook, their cold targeting like is not really good. But with LinkedIn, all that criteria I showed you, you can get very specific who you target. You can say people from the United States, um, people with uh, these specific job titles. So these are functions, but I could go in here and I could say um, very specific job titles. Uh, the only thing is you can either do job titles or you can do function and seniority. So on this retargeting, I do function and seniority, uh, but you could do job titles. Then you can also say they have to be companies of this size companies from these industries um, with this criteria and these people are interested in marketing automation you can add on an interest on top of it so on facebook you're basically just retargeting by their interests or just targeting by their interests here it's the exact demographic of who you want to target plus interest to narrow it down even more um, so yes given that you can understand why the cost per click of LinkedIn ads is a little higher than Facebook. The cost per lead is a little higher than Facebook, but the quality of those leads and the amount of leads that turn into booked calls and the amount of those booked calls that turn into actual revenue, well worth the price once you get it going. Um, and so because of that retargeting strategy, I would say the other really big thing that we, you know, you should love about LinkedIn is that it's your best opportunity to enhance your other ad sources. So if you have Google search, if you have Facebook, you're driving good traffic to your website, you can retarget that target, your targeted demographic who you want to stay in front of on LinkedIn, which is the platform where people actually come to be influenced on buying decisions and get more ads in front of them. And not just ads that look like ads, but building trust and credibility, inviting them to your webinar, showing them your other organic communities, and really building a relationship through digital nurturing. Um, so this is pretty much everything, the basics around LinkedIn. The one other weird thing about LinkedIn is that in order to run ads um, from an account, you actually have to get access um, to the to the company page. So I'm going to do a separate video about how to get access to the ads account and how to get access to the, um, to the company page if you're running it for someone else. And I'll also make one that's how to create an ad account from scratch and how to create a company page. So that is your tour for now.